The Engineers, individuals introduced to the Elite Dangerous universe with the inclusion of Horizons. Love them or hate them, you're going to have to accept that they're part of the universe and a lot of commanders are going to be using their upgrades. So, how do you go and get said upgrades? Well, that's what we are going to be going and having a look at today. I am Commander Chaos Wolf from Sci-Fi Gaming, and let's go and see. Right now, we are trying to go and unlock Liz Ryder, because... From her, we can go and unlock other engineers, a specific one that I'm after that goes and does beam laser upgrades. But before we can get to him, we need to go through Liz Ryder. And in order to get to Liz Ryder, first of all, we need to know about her. But thankfully, as it says here, we learned about her from public sources, which means that everybody will know about her to begin with, but you won't have access to her to straight away. What it says here is you need to gain access to Liz Ryder because you are invited by the... Erubia Blue Mafia, which is fine because we are currently in the Erubia system and we have actually gone and become cordial with the Blue Mafia. And because we got cordial with the Blue Mafia, which is the requirement we need, we've now got this, an engineer invitation contract. So we'll accept that. Now this should give us a mission. And as you can see here, we've got one for delivering data crystals to Bodok in the Skillia system. What a lot of people seem to misunderstand sometimes is when they get these contracts, they think they need to go straight to the engineer, and that's not the case. You actually have to go and complete this mission first to unlock said engineer. Thankfully, you don't have to do this for every engineer. It's only a set few. The worst one of these is Marco Quent. He is an absolute nightmare to go through, but he is so worth it to get to Professor Palin after. As you can see, the mission is only one system out, so this is going to be fairly quick and easy to go and deliver. Speaking too early, as you can see, Bodok is actually uh, a quarter of a million light seconds away from the drop point. So this is going to take us a while to get to, but either way, it's just time. After handing in the mission, we should now... There we go. I get a message at the top, which is an invitation from Liz Ryder. This now gives us our in to the engineer. Now all we need to go and do is go and head over to her and give her an uh, entry fee. Once you receive your invite from the engineer, you'll be able to find them on the galaxy map as this kind of pink nut icon. So like nut and bolt. So when you come into the galaxy map, you'll be able to see them. And you scroll in, you'll be able to go into the system view. And when you're in the system view, it will show you which planet they're on, because all the engineers are planet-based. So you go to the planet, look at planet view, and you'll be able to go and plot your route there. Now, just because you've had an invite doesn't mean that you're going to be instantly able to go and start crafting modifications with the engineer. Not that simple. All the engineers require a one-off buyout price. This changes from engineer to engineer. Some of them, like the Dweller, want you to just pay them half a million credits, whereas other ones will want you to go and get bounty vouchers or specific cargo. This engineer that we're here at the moment, Liz Ryder, she wants cargo. And when you're docked with the station, in order to find out what they want, you can go to the Engineer's Workshop tab, which is one that you're only going to find at Engineer's Bases. So looking here, you will see that she wants 200 tons of landmines. Now, thankfully, I have already gone and picked up all the landmines, but I've got to say it is a bit of an ordeal because so many other commanders are trying to unlock this engineer. And because she wants cargo, they basically strip mined all the supply in about a 50 light year radius around here. So you can use websites like EDDB to go and try and find the cargo that you want. That's what I used, and I managed to find one station with a supply that was able to top me off in one go. So what you do now is you click the donate button, and it'll already be on the either the max that you have in your cargo or the maximum that she actually wants from you. It'll never take more than she wants. So you can click the donate button. Once you click the donate button, it says grade one access. So now we can start modifying items at grade one and as you can see here i've only got one thing that i can go and modify with liz rider which is the armor there are more things that she can actually go and modify in order to do that just click on the browse all tab and you can see what she can do she can do hull reinforcements armor torpedoes mines and missiles 
The thing is, we don't have any of the others, so we don't get shown what is on our ships. So in the modify your modules, you'll only see the what you have access to with your ship right now. And in order to go and upgrade our rep with her, we can either go and craft modules with her, which is the fastest way of doing it, or we can go and sell commodities to her station or her base. Now, I've never done that before, so I don't know what the rates are for it, because it's easy enough getting to the higher ranks, just modifying modules. So that's what we're going to go and do. We're going to go and click into the armor, lightweight alloy, and as you can see from the different ones here, we have the recipes. We have negatives, which show up as red, and blues are the positives or the neutrals. So if we went for lightweight armor, we get more resistances, the mass wouldn't change because we're lightweight armors. But that's a whole nother kettle of fish, so we're not going to get into it. But what we are going to do, go and do is we are going to go and modify up a good amount. So it's always nice to have a bunch of grade 1 materials in your ship. As you can see here, we've got a lot of carbon. Here we've got 37. So this should be enough to get us up a couple of grades. So what we're going to go and do... And by grades, I mean the ranks of different engineer modifications. They're referred to as grades. So what we do is we go and click Preview Outcome, and we click View Cost and Generate. And what will happen is basically all the sliders will go, because these are all randomly generated. And then we get Secondary Abilities. And these will modify up certain parts of your ship. As you can see here, we've got some really nice ones, and I suspect we may end up with a really bad one. No, everything's positive there. But doing that has gone and modified our ship. So what I'm going to go and do is I'm actually going to go and apply that for the moment. And now you can see that just doing that one modification for grade one has taken us a third of the way through the grade one bar until we actually unlock grade two. So what we need to do is we go back, go back to the heavy duty armor and we just go and preview the outcome view it again it shows you here what we are going to cost in order to get it click generate but what you can do is whilst it's generating just click and it will instantly get rid of all the animations so you can just spam this really quickly and there you go so let's go and I click discard here because you don't need to apply these for these to count so that's those extra two. Now we've got access to grade two. But unfortunately, Liz Rider only goes up to grade one for the armor. If I want to go and modify something else, I need to go and either buy mines, torpedoes, or missiles in order to go and modify up to grade two. Now, thankfully, most of the engineers actually sell some of the modules in their stations that they go and modify. They may not be the top quality of each of them, but it's always good to go and check. So what we can do is go into the hard points, and we're going to go down to one of my beam lasers. So we'll browse the shop, and as you can see, they actually do sell mines and missiles. So this is going to be great. We can actually go and modify some of these up to go and get ourselves to the next rank a lot faster. So what I'm going to go and do is I'm going to go put one of these missile launchers on this ship. I'm going to buy and I'm going to go and store my old module because I want it back after. Now we've got the module here. That's going to be great. We can go back out, go into the engineer's workshop again, and now you can see we've got access to modifying the missiles. So we can go into here, and as you can see, we've got the ability to go and modify up a bunch of things. I think the lightweight mount is going to be our best one to go and try because we have got a lot of materials for it. So again, we're going to go and modify up three of these. I'm not going to go and apply anything yet. So I'm going to go and generate. Try again. And try again. Now, one thing you'll notice on the weapon modifications is we get the experimental effects down here. Now, nine times out of 10, or even 90% of the time, nothing will show up here. Occasionally, you will get an experimental effect, and you can actually view these by clicking the adjust up here. Now, what this will give you is the special experimental additional effects, like overload munitions. What these do is convert a proportional explosion, explosive damage into thermal. 
So it makes it better against shields. A thermal cascade generates a lot more heat on the target. So them using shield cell banks is going to be very difficult. Penetrate to mutation. What this means is it's going to be easier to penetrate the hull of a ship and damage internal modules, which is great for missiles. Or em emissive rounds. What this does is makes it easier to track the target. So if you manage to hit a stealth ship or a ship running silent running with emissive rounds, you should still be able to target them. So that's great. But if you do go and adjust like we've just had a look at here, as you can see here, it will cost you two ranks or two grades with the engineer to go and do it because they don't like doing this. That said, if you do actually manage to go and get an experimental effect, but it's not the one you want, you can again go and click the adjust, but instead of costing two ranks, it'll only cost one. So that's nice to know. But now let's go and discard these three that we've just ground up here. So we'll go and discard. And as you can see, we're now available to go and to modify upgrade three. So we'll go back in and we can go and modify up a bunch of things here. And again, we're going to go and want to look for ones where we have the chance to modify up a good amount of them. But it looks like we've got one of each of these because I've only, I'm have only i limited to one mechanical scrap. But that's fine. But either way, let's go and modify up a grade 3 rapid fire just for the sake of it. So preview. We'll see what it will change about our weapon. And as you can see, the further we go down the... Well, further we go up the grades, the more pronounced the benefits and the more pronounced the negatives are going to be so again we're going to go and click generate Incoming message. and as you can hear we've just got a message we'll go and check out what that is in a second but that's very relevant to the engineers and there we go now we've got to wait for the secondary effects and the further you go down these things as well the more of these secondary effects you're going to get and the more the bigger they're going to be and as you can see, we just got a massive reduction on this true to draw there, but we're still in the positives. And this is the animation of what would happen if you're normally rolling for it and not just skipping through. Now, are we going to go? No, we're just off getting that. It is pretty much just like roulette. If you hit a blue, you get one of the experimental effects. If you hit a red, you get nothing. So it is very, very gambly here. But what we're going to go and do is we're actually going to go and apply this one. Now, the thing is, we can't actually go and go and modify it up again, but we can go and have a look at the same rapid fire. And as you can see, all the visuals are very different because this doesn't show you flatly how it works every time. This shows you what the modifications are, are going to be to your weapon or to the module from the current state of your module. So it's going to show you how this can change in relation to the modification that you've currently got as well. But anyway, let's go back and let's go and have a look at that message we just got. So what this is, is we've now got an invitation from Heratani. Now Heratani is another engineer, but you only find out about her once you get to grade three and a third of Liz Ryder. Now this happens with a lot of engineers. And in fact, some engineers actually go and give you two. So that's nice. So we got the invitation from Liz Ryder from before. And now we've got access to Heratani. Now Heratani is very nice because she goes and modifies up to grade 5 power plants. So she's a great one to go and have. But in order to go and get to grade 5, we're going to have to go and modify up some more. So what I'm going to have to do is come in and modify up some more things. So modifying another two grade 3s. So three of each grade will get you to the next rank. So that's going to be good to know as well. So now we have access to grade 4 on the missiles. Now it'll show here that we've currently got grade 3 rapid fire modification actually applied to the weapon. And what we can do is we can actually go and modify up some grade 4 lightweight mounts. Now one of the things to note is that as you go down the different ranks here, they use different materials. So you're not always going to be restricted like we were before with having one of something when we get to the next rank. So what I'm going to go and do now is I'm going to go and modify three of these. So there's one. Try again. There's two. Try again. 
And there's three. So discard, discard, and there we are. We're to grade five. So that's maxed out with Heritani. So what we can go and do is we can modify anything we want up to grade five. Now I'm not sure if we have access, oh, we do. We have access to grade five rapid fires. Now this is awesome. So what this allows us to do is modify these up so we get faster reload time, lower distributor draw, less jitter, and everything else, so it's really nice. So each of these different things here is going to go and apply to a different aspect of the weapon. So more damage per second, higher rate of fire, less damage if you go for rapid fire because you're compensating for that by being able to fire faster. Uh, jitter as well. Jitter's a bit of an iffy one because uh, it makes your weapon wobble more. Uh, distributor draw means that when you're firing it's going to be taking up less power from your power distributor. So that's nice. And reload time means that they are going to be having less reload time here if it's in the blue. If it's in the red it means it's going to take longer to reload. So that's the basics. There are a lot more things that engineers modifications can do because we can go and modify shields and so on. But the idea of this video is to show you just how to unlock engineers and how to rank up with them. So I do hope you've enjoyed the video. Like it if you've liked it, dislike it if you didn't. Neither of those good enough for you, that's what the comments are for. But I've been Commander Chaos Wolf from Sci-Fi Gaming. You guys, as always, have been epic. I will see you soon. And until next time, my fellow commanders, keep flying and stay shiny.